Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play the game called Astra from Mind Clash Play. To set the game up, select the sphere board based on the number of players in the game. This is a sphere for a three player game, this one for a four player game, this one for a five player game and so on. Then create a draw deck. Shuffle all these 48 constellation cards and based on the number of players in the game draw the following number of cards from the deck. I'm going to set up a three player game so this deck contains 25 cards. Then place this game end card on top of this deck and to make it visible you can rotate the card. Then take all the remaining cards and put them on top of this deck. Then draw the top card of the deck and place it into a pile which is now going to be a discard pile. Then take this sphere marker and place it on the sphere matching the symbol on the card in the discard pile. That is going to be the starting active sphere of the game. Then draw the number of the constellation cards equal to the number of these arrows on the sphere board and place them face up in any order aligned with those arrows. Then create the general supply of the Stardust tokens and Telescope tokens within the reach of all players. By the way, this trade doesn't come with the game. Then each player takes one player board, one random endgame scoring card, eight Stardust tokens and one marker pen. The final scoring card is a secret information so keep it hidden from other players. Randomly choose the starting player who will take this first player token and we're ready to start. In Astra, players will take on the roles of astronomers discovering these constellations by marking these undiscovered stars with their marker pen, for which they will gain various bonuses, special abilities and the fame points. The game is played in turns, starting with the first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction until the game ends. On your turn, perform the following three phases in this order. The first phase is called the ability phase and in this phase, if you have any active constellation cards in your play area, you may use the special abilities on those cards. The second phase is called the action phase and here you have two options, you can either observe or rest with observing, you will mark these stars on the cards with the marker pen of your color. And with resting, you will refill the pouch with the Stardust tokens and you will reactivate your constellation cards. The third phase is called the discovery phase. If all the stars on the constellation card or cards will be marked, those constellations will become discovered and players who have contributed to the discovery will get the bonuses. Then the new card from the draw deck will be revealed. The end of the game will be triggered once this game end card will be revealed. And during the final scoring, in addition to the victory points you would score over the course of the game, you will score victory points for your wisdom, for any leftover stardust tokens, for the size of your pouch, for your leftover active constellations which are in the vertical position, and most importantly, from this game end card. I'm going to explain all these phases in more detail now. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose any number of your active constellation cards. And by active, it means the card is in a vertical position and you may use the ability on those cards. Some of those abilities are instant, which means you gain these benefits immediately. Some of them are applied over the course of your current turn. After you use the ability of the card, exhaust the card, which you do by rotating the card 90 degrees to the horizontal position. And you may not use this ability on the card until you reactivate that card, which is done during your rest action. This phase is optional, so if you want, you may skip it completely. And if not, you may use any number of your active cards. In the action phase you have two options, either to observe or rest. When you choose to observe, you must choose at least one card which is still in this undiscovered area and mark at least one star on that card. To observe a star, you simply mark it with the marker pen of your color 
and for each star you observe you have to spend one stardust token from your personal supply and return it back to the general supply. Then follow these marking rules. If there are no marked stars on the selected card, you must mark the starting star, which is this white dot with a small white circle around it. Then you may continue marking additional stars. The next one must be directly adjacent to the previously marked star with the white line. So in our example, we could mark this one or this one. Let's say we mark this star. And remember for each one, you have to pay a stardust token. If you choose to continue marking additional stars, the next one must be directly adjacent to the last one you have marked. So we could continue like this. Then this one only has this star, which is adjacent. And from this star, we only have one choice, which is this star. After that, there are no adjacent unmarked stars from this one. So we have to end our observation action. You may also end your observation action if you don't want to mark any additional stars or if you don't have any stardust tokens or if you mark the last star on the constellation card. I'll cover that case in just a minute. If you take the observe action and you want to mark a card which already has some of the stars marked, the first star you mark must be adjacent to one of the previously marked stars. So in this case it could be this one this one or this one. Then from the first star you mark, continue marking the stars using the rules we have just covered. Now, in addition to this special starting star, there are common stars and also this one, which is called a grand star. Each grand star also has a name and when you mark this star, you gain one wisdom point. Anytime you gain a wisdom, mark the leftmost empty space on your wisdom track. This wisdom track limits the number of constellation cards you can have in your play area. When you reach the end of this wisdom track, any additional wisdom points are lost. Once you finish your observe action, you can continue taking additional observe actions either on the same constellation card or on any other undiscovered cards. For each additional observe action, you must spend this telescope token. All these additional observe actions follow the same rules as the first action. You may take any number of the additional observe actions as long as you spend a telescope token for each one, but you are not forced to do so. So if you want to keep some of those telescope tokens for later turns, you can do so. Instead of taking the observe action in your action phase, you can take the rest action. With this action, you will first refill your pouch with the stardust tokens up to the number, which is the highest number marked in this area. So in our example, it is seven Stardust tokens. If you would have more Stardust tokens when you take the rest action, you obviously don't have to return them, but you just don't get any additional Stardust tokens. And by the way, you may increase the size of your pouch either by some special abilities or with the bonuses from the Constellation cards. Anytime you increase the size, just mark the next highest number on your player board. Then in the second step, you will be able to reactivate some or all of your constellation cards. First, check for the active sphere on the sphere board. It's a sphere with this sphere marker. There are four elements in the game, earth, wind, water and fire. And you may reactivate all your constellations with the active element. So here the active element is Earth, so you may reactivate this constellation card. You may not reactivate this one as it doesn't have the matching element. Immediately after that, move the sphere marker to the next sphere. Anytime you move the sphere marker over this symbol, discard the top card of the draw deck and place it to the discard pile. After you have finished your action phase, the next phase is the discovery phase in which you have to check all the constellation cards around the sphere board and if any card has all the stars marked, that constellation is discovered and the discovery phase is actually triggered. This can only happen on your turn if you are the person marking the last star or stars on the constellation card or cards 
And that can happen during your action phase when you take the observe action or even during the ability phase if you have any abilities that allow you to mark the stars on the cards. So since you have marked the last star or stars on the card, you will become the owner of the card. As a reward, you will get that card and you will be able to use the ability on the card. However, each other player who has marks on the card will also get a chance to pick a bonus from that card. These players are called assisting players. Starting with the players who has the most marks, that player will choose one of the rewards from the card and then cross out that reward. Then the next player, player with the next highest number of marks on the card, will also have a chance to pick a bonus, any other than already crossed out. So let's say this one. And in a game with more players, if there would be more marks of other players, they would be able to choose additional rewards. If there is a tie between those assisting players, here we have two red marks and two blue marks and then one green. Those tied players may choose the reward simultaneously and they may either choose the same one or any two different ones. And you have to mark out all the bonuses that have been selected. And then other assisting players may still choose a bonus which has not been crossed out yet. One last note, only the assisting players may choose the bonus from the card. Players who don't have any marks on the card may not choose any bonuses. There are six types of bonuses in the game. With this first one you simply gain victory points or the fame points. With this bonus you increase the size of your pouch by the indicated number, here it's one. With this bonus you gain the wisdom points, here it's two wisdom points. Then with this bonus you gain the indicated number of stardust tokens and in this case you can actually exceed your pouch size. With this bonus you gain the indicated number of the telescope tokens and with this bonus you can reactivate the indicated number of your constellation cards and you can reactivate the cards regardless of their element type and the active sphere. Then the new owning player will take the card and place it in their active area always as the active constellation. Now you have to check the limit of the cards you can have in your active area. The limit is the highest number with the marked space. In this example it's number 2, number 3 still has an empty space underneath. So if you have more cards than your limit you have to discard down to that limit. And you can discard any of those cards, either the card you have just gained or any other, even inactive. Then draw the new card from the draw deck and refill the empty space around the sphere board. And if there are any other cards which have been discovered, repeat the same process. Whenever this game end card is revealed from the draw deck, the end game is triggered. If it was triggered by the first player, finish the current round and then the game will be over. If it was triggered by any other player than the first player, continue taking turns until you finish the current round and then starting with the first player you would play one last round of the game and then the game will be over. If during these final turns any cards would be discovered, continue drawing new cards from the draw deck as usual. After that proceed to final scoring. First gain the victory points or fame equal to the size of your pouch. Here we have 8 points, 8 plus 23 is 31. Anytime you gain the fame points you can either mark all the spaces in between or just the last one. Then gain the victory points equal to your card limit, in this example 5 points. So that's additional 5. Then one victory point for every three of your leftover Stardust tokens. Then you get one victory point for each two stars that you have marked on any undiscovered cards. So those are the cards that are still around the sphere. Then score these fame points on all the active constellation cards in your play area. You don't score the points for your exhausted constellation. And then score the victory points from your endgame scoring card for your elements on your constellations. This time you will count all the constellations, even the exhausted ones. And for each element on those cards, mark another space 
on this endgame card. Note that some of these spaces already have a mark, so you add additional marks for your elements on the cards. So here we have one wind element and here one fire element. Then score the victory points for your columns and also for the rows. In each column, if you have three marks in the column, you score three victory points. If you have four marks, you would score six victory points. So in these other three columns, there is nothing. And then for each row, score the victory points from the column where you have the last mark. So again, for the first, third and fourth one, there is no victory point. But for the second one, again, we have six victory points. So total, we have 12 victory points from the endgame card. Add these victory points to your final score and then the player with the most points is the winner. There are small changes for the two player game and I'm going to cover these changes now. In addition to the two players in the game, you will need one neutral player marker. This pen is called the dreamer marker because there is a fourth phase in the game called the dream phase. The first and second phase play exactly the same as in the standard game. There is one small change in the discovery phase when you discover the new constellation. If the discovered constellation has any marks of the dreamer pen, the dreamer player, in our example those are these green dots, first check how many marks come from the dreamer pen and how many from the assisting player. If the number of marks from the dreamer pen is higher than the assisting player, then cross out the first two boons on the card and then the assisting player may choose one of those two remaining bonuses. If the assisting player would have more marks than the dreamer pen or the equal number, the assisting player may choose any of the bonuses. Then as I already mentioned, there is a fourth phase in a two player game called the dream phase. That is triggered when you take the rest action. You perform that rest in a usual way, including moving the sphere marker. Then if any of the constellation will be discovered, you would perform the standard discovery phase. And then you would trigger the dream phase in which the dreamer pen would mark some of the stars on one of the constellation cards. First, you have to choose one of those constellation cards. If there is any constellation which doesn't have any marked stars yet, you have to choose that card. If there is more than one such card, select the card with more stars. You can either count those stars or you can look at the number in a top right hand corner of the card. And if there is more than one card with the same highest number of stars, you can choose whichever one you want. If all the cards would already have some stars marked, Simply choose the card with the highest number of stars and if there is more than one card with the highest number of stars, again choose any one you want. So here we have two cards with 14 stars and no star marked on those cards. So let's say we will choose this Draco constellation. And now check the number on this active sphere. Here it's three. The number can be one, two, three or four. And mark that many stars on the selected constellation card. Follow all the standard rules, so you have to start with a starting star and continuing using the rules we have already covered. However, you may choose this dreamer pen to your strategic advantage. You are not necessarily forced to mark exactly that number of stars. In this example, if we would start with marking this star, there is only one additional star we can mark in this example and with this the dreamer phase would be over because there is no other legal star you can mark. One last note, it may happen that with this action you may actually mark the last stars on the constellation which means the constellation will be discovered. Perform that discovery phase immediately. If there are any assisting players they may choose these bonuses using the standard rules. However, since the constellation card was discovered by the dreamer pen, the card would be gained technically by the dreamer pen, so it would not be gained by any player and would be simply discarded. So that's how you play Astra. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or click the thank you button under the video. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time.
I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash